asking everyone, please stand and let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Guru Preceptors, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lairi Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, Beloved Guru Deva, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, Saints of all religions, we bow at thy feet. O oh, great ones, <clears throat> help us to uplift our consciousness, to receive thee fully in body, in mind, and in soul. Om Shanti Shanti. Let's walk in place and affirm, I am awake and ready. 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 These are part of the super conscious living exercises. We'll do all of them on tomorrow. Today, we'll just do two. The next one is I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. I am positive, energetic, enthusiastic. I am positive, energetic, enthusiastic. I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. And now I'll read to you from Swamiji from Intuition for Starters, and then we'll hear Swamiji. <clears throat> the state of superconsciousness is latent in every individual. It's still unrealized in most people, though. By contacting it, we can become aware of our interconnection with everyone and with all life. Paramahansa Yogananda, master in the science of yoga and meditation, could enter the superconscious state at will. He wrote a beautiful poem in which he describes this state of oneness with all as knowing, the thoughts of all men past, present to come. In his autobiography of a yogi, Yogananda, also described this state as center everywhere, circumference nowhere. When we reach our own inner center, we realize that the center of all beings is a part of our consciousness and that nothing exists outside of that. Let's hear Swami Kriyananda Ji now on this topic of super consciousness. We are more aware when we become conscious. The subconscious mind represents that level of relative unawareness from which we have ascended to become human beings the uh, lower forms of life, they are purely subconscious. It's not subconscious in the sense that they have no other consciousness for it to be below. It's subconscious in the sense of being so relatively unaware that we could say that compared to our state, those lower life forms are asleep. As the Indian scriptures say, God sleeps in the rocks, dreams in the plants, begins to know himself in the animals, in man begin, is fully awake. Or perhaps we should amend that and say, in man can be fully awake. <laughs> the state of consciousness from which we've come might be likened to a, a tunnel coming out of a, the pit of a mine, coming out of that darkness into some light as you get higher up, and then finally in the superconsciousness coming out into the light of day. What we see is a gradual progression from the relative there's, it's not possible to be completely unaware because everything is conscious. Everything is a manifestation of consciousness. But just as it's possible or imaginable to shrink something smaller and smaller and smaller and never reach a point at which you could say it had disappeared, you could go on through, in, through eternity shrinking it and still uh, it would be unimaginable that it would shrink into nothingness, merely into invisibility to human eyes. So also consciousness can shrink and shrink and shrink, but it can never disappear because it's the only ultimate reality and everything is a manifestation of that reality. So we come out of that relative unknowing more and more and more into the conscious level um, then from that, just as the real difference between the conscious state and the subconscious state is that you're more aware now. Similarly, 
when you wake up in superconsciousness, the contrast between that and our ordinary state of consciousness is very comparable to that contrast between the subconscious and the conscious state that we experience every morning when we wake up and jump out of bed and say, I'm awake and ready. You wake up in the light, you wake up in, in uh, super consciousness, and suddenly you're so much more aware that you say, my goodness, I've been sleeping. And that's a strange state for us to be uh, uh, even imagining now, because we, we feel that we're so awake. Good morning again, friends. This is from Autobiography of a Yogi, Master's Experience in Cosmic Consciousness and Samadhi. I'm just reading a couple of paragraphs. The flesh was as though dead, yet in my intense awareness, I knew that never before had I been fully alive. My sense of identity was no longer narrowly confined to a body, but embraced the circumambient atoms. People on distant streets seemed to be moving gently over my own remote periphery. The roots of plants and trees appeared through a dim transparency of the soil. I discerned the inward flow of their sap. The whole vicinity lay bare before me. My ordinary frontal vision was now changed to a vast spherical sight, simultaneously all perceptive. Through the back of my head, I saw men strolling, far down Rygat Road, and noticed also a white cow who was leisurely approaching. When she reached the space in front of the open ashram gate, I observed her with my two physical eyes. As she passed by, behind the brick wall, I saw her clearly still. All objects within my panoramic gaze trembled and vibrated like quick motion pictures. An oceanic joy broke upon calm, endless shores of my soul. The Spirit of God, I realize, is exhaustless bliss. His body is countless tissues of light. A swelling glory within me began to envelop towns, continents, the earth, solar, stellar systems, tenuous nebulae, and floating universes. The entire cosmos, gently luminous, like a city seen afar at night, glimmered within the infinitude of my being. How inspiring are these words from Master. And Master would sometimes go to a movie with the disciples to have a break. And they would, he, he never watched the movie, his eyes were closed. And they would tap him. They say, Guruji, are you watching a movie? And he said, oh, yes, leave me alone. I'm watching the big movie. This is the big movie. And I remember one time I was going through a difficult uh, patch, a difficult phase. And, and I was praying to Master. I was looking at his picture saying, why is it so bad? Why does everything have to be so bad? And I heard in my consciousness so clearly, what station are you tuned to? Like, this isn't the station of God and the Gurus. And so our whole path is to uplift us into a higher consciousness. This is why Master wrote that Autobiography of a Yogi, that great book, and why he talks about the great masters. And you think of all of our masters' lives are talked about. You think of Pranabhananda, the levitating saint, the Teresa Neumann, Gary Bala, who never ate, and all the fantastic things that can be done if you're in a higher state of awareness and consciousness. And Master himself showed this to the disciples many times. He could communicate back and forth with saints, sages from all times, all places. One time a disciple said, well, Master, who was that out on the bluff that you were talking to the other day? He said, well, who do you mean? He says, well, there was somebody you were talking to. And he said, oh, they all come. There's so many that come. I don't know who you mean. And he would have saints and masters visiting him all the time. And he showed also that he was beyond that little body, which we have to realize that we're not these little bodies. We're the infinite spirit, the uh, cosmic consciousness, like a wave merging back into the full ocean of cos cosmic consciousness. And so master would say that... Um, well, first of all, he could energize by just looking at the spiritual eye. He didn't need to move his body. 
he could taste food when he was cooking from the spiritual eye. And then he told the disciples, I know every thought that you think. And Swamiji said he showed it many different times. And one time he was walking with Swamiji, holding, uh, leaning on Swamiji, and he said, I don't know which body I'm supposed to be moving. I'm in all the bodies. <laughs> he was just omnipresent within that body. And then one time a wishing well fell on his foot. And he said, now I'm going to show you that when I lift my consciousness up, which is a great thing for us to remember, if we can lift the consciousness up, and he proved it. He said, I'm going to show you that I feel no pain. And he lifted his consciousness up, and his face was just normal. And they said, now I'm going to show you. I let my consciousness drop. I'm going to feel the pain. He let his consciousness drop, and his face was just, you could tell that there was so much pain from what had happened. Then he lifted his consciousness back up. His face was normal. So he showed through his life that this is why we're practicing while we're practicing. All of our practices, I, I remember when I came onto the spiritual path, I was just, I was just so happy to have found something that worked. I remember I was so happy to get a glimpse, even if we're not in cosmic consciousness, like the masters, even if we're not in super consciousness, we, we can take a, have a glimpse of that and we go into it a little bit in and out, in and out. I remember just the feeling after practicing meditation, I'm so happy. Wow, I'm not this little person. I can access higher regions. I remember through chanting, oh, my heart is wide open. I can go beyond the emotions and the worries and the fears. And I remember doing yoga postures and feeling so relaxed. I could just pop right out of my body and energizing to be able to lift up from the tensions. And this is what all of our practices are for, to affirm and reaffirm. You're not the body. You're the spirit. The spark of God is in you. This is why we do the blessing here at the spiritual eye, to remind ourselves, also to awaken the energy there, but also to remind or live from that spiritual eye, live from super consciousness. This is why the Kriya blessing, discipleship blessing, of course, it's also in the heart, but that's why it's given to lift us up and remind us that in our lives, after we practice, then we come into our life and we can live in higher consciousness with ideas and inspiration and solutions and insights. And the different levels are the subconscious level is the level of sleep when we're sleeping or dreaming memories, habits are, are lots in the subconscious part of our, of our brain, of our consciousness. The uh, conscious part is the thing about it is it's problem oriented. It analyzes, it takes apart, it figures things out, it thinks all the time, but it's always on a problem level. And super consciousness, this is what after we meditate, you feel so uplifted. Oh, I mean, every day, I'll share with you, after I meditate, I write my ideas down. It's just flowing, just a flood of ideas. And I know where they're coming from. They're coming from above. They're coming from the masters. They're coming from the highest, higher realms. And so after meditation, we're in a state of even a little bit of super consciousness. Master, master said, even if you feel a little joy, take that bubble of joy and blow on it and just expand it. And so when we're in that, that level, after we meditate, uh, that's a level of inspiration, of insight, of, of answers, of talking with God, of hearing God's voice. And remember the beautiful story of uh, Dijin and, Matt and Makunda when they met their master. I told it last week, so I won't tell again. But Swami, they were meeting their master, Swami Sri Tesraji, at the train. And then when... They got there, Swami Sri Teswarji had sent both boys a message, a telepathic message through the ether. I won't be on that train. He was coming on a later train. And so the one boy said, no, he's told us. He told us to meet him. And so he probably was afraid that he so told us to meet him. So then he came on another train. And then at that point, Swami Sri Teswarji says, I sent you, I sent you a message too. Dijin, but you didn't get it. 
And this is the thing, we don't get it. The messages are there. The masters are guiding. They're telling us, they're guiding us. Go there, don't do this, do that. But we don't get the message because we're not on the level of where they're at. They can't communicate with us on a low level. We have to reach up, raise your antenna and say, I'm listening, I can hear you. The master said, after meditation, sit a long time in that silence and just commune. Lift yourself up in the light, in God's peace and energy and light and guidance after you meditate. And in that state, so many wonderful things come to us. I was thinking of, I was thinking of the different uh, musicians and how there's a wonderful book by George A. Bell talks with great composers and he talks of how these Western composers, Brahms, Mozart, different ones, how they just tuned in on a higher level. There was some level of super consciousness there. They didn't write down the notes, they heard the music. And then they, uh, they heard the music, sometimes they saw the notes just right there in front of them. Now that's a level of higher awareness. And the great scientist Einstein said that the law of relativity came in a flash. It wasn't a thinking, 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 it, it was there. And then he said he just stood there in awe and wonder that that came to him. And with various things, other things that happened, uh, George Washington Carver, uh, Luther Burbank, they talked to the flowers and uh, flowers and the plants and they had communication with them. There's so many wonderful things. And I'll tell you something that I haven't shared this with many people, but it was very interesting something that happened uh, some years back. Before I came to India, nine years before, I was doing a, a week, a weekend program, a week-long program with people, preparing for Kriya. And I was talking with each of the students. Now, I won't have time to go into this story in detail, but I think you can get the gist of it. I was having one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling times. So this one fellow, he wrote me, now nine years later, he did not tell me then what happened, but nine years later, he said, when I was talking with you, we were discussing things, suddenly I didn't, the vision of you was no longer there, the visual of you, and there was another whole scene that was going on instead of me looking at you. And he said, I saw this uh, hot, dusty, place where you were living, you were older then, um, you were teaching then, and he said, and you were wearing blue. Now, this is amazing. This was 15 years before the Naya Swami order. And then subsequently, before I came to India, which I had no idea I was coming to India, before I came to India, this man and his wife came to visit me and tell me what had happened? He couldn't even tell his wife for a couple of days. He said, I stumbled out of the room. I just was so shocked. Now, this was a super conscious experience. They came to India a year later, and I met them again. He said, Diana, this is what I saw. Now, how do you make that? That's an amazing thing. And with, you know, Augustia, Brigu, Nadi readings, they, they're from thousands of years ago. They can tell you what's going to happen in your life. Now, that's a super conscious experience that that knowledge comes you think of the great scriptures how did, how did the gita come mahabharata these were received by different great ones you think of all the various uh things that have come to people the yoga postures how did they come kriya yoga how did it come all the meditation techniques it came because someone was receptive and god was able to give those to all of us, to mankind. Now this is super conscious attunement. It's not something that uh, you're, you're faking it or you're, you're guessing or you're just trying to be psychic. It's something that you attune your consciousness in that way and you uplift yourself. Now how are we gonna get there? I would say to you, try to get there don't say no i'm happy with the conscious level i'm happy with my problems or i'm happy with the sleep level you've got to reach up 
Master came to get us up to super consciousness and to say, you can do it, even a little bit. And a little bit gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And how do we get there? First thing, you have to have a lot of energy. You can't be uh, an armchair devotee, sounds good. I'm happy that it happened. I'm happy that that possibility is there. You have to get up and get moving and do the exercises, energization, affirmations, uh, various practices, yoga postures. <clears throat> you have to get your energy moving up to break through doubts, fears, worries. I can't do it. Swami used to tell us, say, I can, I will. Not, oh, me, I'll never be able to do it. Well, you won't. <clears throat> but if you say, yes, I will. Master said every day, just say his poem, Samadhi. Repeat it, repeat some line of it in a whole poem and just put your mind, I'm in that consciousness. I'm breaking out, I'm breaking out. It's a wonderful feeling. First thing is you have to have energy. Second thing is you need the guru, the guru's power. How are you going to open up your chakras by yourself? How are you going to open up the spiritual eye by yourself? How are you going to lift up your energy by yourself? How are you going to lift up the kundalini, go into Om by, by yourself? Oh, I'm my own guru. I do it myself. No, it doesn't work that way. But the master's power, he said, 25%, your effort, 25%. I'll give you lots of my good karma. The guru gives magnetism, energy, everything that we need to lift ourselves up. 50% is the grace of God. And so Swamiji used to say, Swamiji said that when he would sit, he used to sit with Master, <clears throat> even if Master wasn't even talking about anything spiritual, Swamiji said, my consciousness would just come up and I felt it was just, I was soaring out into the infinite just by sitting with the guru. As you meditate, as you go about your day, whatever, just say, Master, your power can change my consciousness. You must bless me to break out. I remember there was a, there was a man <clears throat> who, Master, uh, this man was just caught in his body all the time. Master would say, just come out, come out of that body. Get out of that consciousness. Get out of that littleness. And then, so we need the guru. And uh, thirdly, we need to have the time to really put the energy out. We need to have the <clears throat> devotion to call on God and to feel God's presence. And Swamiji said, in that calling and in that feeling, God's presence, he said, look here at the spiritual eye. You need intense focus there, not tension, but focus. And I'm going to read to you something. We'll do this exercise as we close. But he said, look at the spiritual eye and feel it just a beam. You're just shooting out. Your awareness is here. It's not in your toes. It's not in your tummy. And it's nowhere, but it's right here. And you're just shooting that energy straight through the ether. And um, if you're praying, it's a prayer demand. You shoot that out. Just like he said, uh, just like uh, a thought bomb that it's exploding in the ether and feel yourself just breaking out and breaking the levels of subconscious conscious. Now I'm going up into the super conscious level and hold on to that level as long as you can. And then as it comes down at your next meditation, next practices, hold on to that level of awareness and you'll find that it's longer it's longer, it's longer until you're in that consciousness all the time. And this is what the masters came to bring us. This is how, what Swamiji taught us. And what he said is our goal in life to break out of the consciousness of the little self and the ego. Let's do this practice together. <clears throat> Let's inhale, tense the body, exhale. Inhale, vibrate, exhale, once more. All the power within you, vibrate, dump the body, relax. We're following this practice of Swamiji. Please close your eyes. Bring your attention to the spiritual eye, the point between the eyebrows. Now, 
Knit the brows together several times, the eyebrows. Squeeze your eyebrows and eyes several times. What we're doing is energizing that spot, magnetizing it so the energy will go there. Do it once or twice more. And then relax the brow. Then concentrate on projecting a beam of light from this point, like the light coming from the projection booth in a movie theater. Project the light out from that point, the spiritual eye. This, feel this beam moving outward through space with great power, driving away all shadows of pain, worries, fears, doubts, delusions. Use your willpower to send this light further and further out into space. Feel you're completely centered there now at the spiritual eye, the center of soul awareness, of super consciousness, of God contact, the door to the divine. Now relax and feel a radiant center of light and energy at the point between the eyebrows. During your day, try to keep focus at this point and everything you do, you will feel God with you and the masters. Let's close by listening to a beautiful song of Swami Kriyanandaji's now. Dare to be different. Dare to be different, dare to be free, dare to roam far like wind on the sea, fly like a gull, soar high on the air, be strong in your courage when others despair. Never in anger, never in haste, go without pride, be never a best. Freedom is yours, if freedom you'll give, to all give it freely, in freedom you'll live. Mountains that stand up tall to the sky, tell us no dreaming is ever too high. Dare to defy them, brave that high peak, You'll never know failure if bravely you seek. Dare to be different, dare to be free, dare to roam far like wind on the sea, fly like a gull, soar high on the air, be strong in your courage when others despair. Have a wonderful day and God bless you.